Hi, Matt, are you there? Hi, Matt. Hey, John. How's it going? All right. You hanging in there? Hanging in. How's the business? Uh, I mean, all things considered, not too bad. I mean, what Could I've heard worse. from some people is that you can't make up for like the alcohol and beverage sales, but the food, in some cases, food sales might be up. So it's a reduction, but not too bad. Is that right? For us, for us, it hasn't been too bad. Um, but we already had a delivery and carry out business established. So that's a good point. I know a couple of other restaurant owners in Decatur that are not so fortunate. Yeah, I have a friend, um, actually, he's a superintendent. His wife owns a bar and a restaurant in Redbud, Illinois. Okay. And he, he was telling me, he said, you know, you don't realize he, he, where they're hurting is the markup on like soda is so hot like you don't realize that like when you buy a pop it doesn't cost you a whole lot right <laughs> right so right anyway but your family's okay yeah yeah how about you guys you know feeling just a little drained about the whole situation to be honest with you i've been i didn't think being at home or not going to work that much would be so draining but it just mentally kind of draining yeah, no, I'm, you know. I'm glad I still get to work. That's for sure. <laughs> so I go in like twice a week. We rotate schedules. So we're not in there at the same time. Um, you know, 75% 80 I can do remotely. Sometimes I have to print something out or sign something, but. Right. So yeah, my wife has bad asthma. So she's really kind of freaks out about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like it when I go anywhere. So. Right. The agenda looked pretty straightforward. Yeah, we just need to talk. It shouldn't take too long. Um, here we have someone else come in. Brad's here. <laughs> I, this is being recorded. I'll remind everybody of that. Okay. So, I've never recorded a Zoom, so we'll see how this works. This is my first Zoom in general. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Brad and Marsha are connecting. Hi, Marsha. I think she's muted still. Well, she's got to, I don't, I didn't set that up. She's got to unmute herself. Okay. Hello. Hi, Marcia. Hello. Thanks for joining, Marsha. Hello. Well, hopefully, this will go well. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I'm record. I've never recorded a Zoom, but I am recording this. Okay. So I have to figure out then where to find the recording. I've never done that before. Okay. 
So, um, and there's not a whole lot on here really in terms of okay. like action items. And then I can hopefully locate that recording and send it to you. Okay, that Let's sounds good. Um, and then if there's any attachments like last time, right? you'll just email those to me, I'll yeah. put that with it. Yeah, or I'll just put them on your chair or something. That's fine. This is Matt's first Zoom, so we should congratulate. Yes. <laughs> My daughter has technically done more Zooms than I have. Yeah. Uh, Brad's on, and this is his first anything. <laughs> Hi, Brad. Good evening. Are we just going to listen to you, huh? We can't see you? Well, I don't know. I can see all of you, so maybe it's better that way. <laughs> I think there's a button on your bottom left. I had to click a button to be able to Did you? see myself. Yeah. It's on the bottom left. There, there it is. Go. It is. There I, oh, my God, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. Hello. Hello. How's everyone? Good. Hold in. Hanging in. Present. Good. Good. How's your family doing, Lori? Um, we're doing good. We're hanging in there. Hannah, I'm sure everybody knows, but Hannah tested positive for COVID oh, back on April 10th, I think, somewhere around there because she works at the Fairhaven Nursing Home. So oh, wow. we had to shelter in for a little while, but we're all clear and nobody showed any symptoms, even her. So we think she might have tested positive because I've been hearing rumors that people that test positive may have just had the flu shot uh -huh. and not actually had COVID. So um, her boyfriend, who she had been around, also got tested twice and he was negative. So I don't know. It's weird. Well, it's still scary. Yeah. Yes, very. And she hasn't worked since April 2nd because we won't let her go back yet until it clears up. So so she's, um, I think she's going to be able to draw an employment, which is good. Good. Hi, Wissam. Hey, Hello. John. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hi, Wissam. Well, it looks like we have a quorum, I think. <laughs> Hi, Leo. Howdy. Hey, Leo. Howdy. Getting used to these video meetings. <laughs> I know. That right. seems the way of my life anymore. Well, this is Matt Crawford's first Zoom, so we should give him a, a right. hug. <laughs> Good job, Matt, getting it set up. <laughs> oh, I had Hill set it up. Oh. <laughs> I just walked downstairs and clicked the button. You just walked in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I thought Lindsay was coming, but I'm not sure. No, no one else yet. I think Brandy said that she's so busy, she might not be able to make it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, believe that. I had to work on my lighting so I could look as good as possible for this. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't click the button that says make yourself better? Make you no, I hear better? My, I turned it <laughs> off. I turned my, uh, I actually have the computer up on a, uh, a cat stand that they use for scratch and post and got the dog on the bed over here and got my regular desk <laughs> behind me. But if I'm facing the wall, all you'd see is a glow behind me from the Sunlight Open the window. <laughs> shadows on my face because the lights in the middle of the ceiling, and it doesn't it doesn't make very well for video conferences. My wife does so many of these. We actually looked up a website the other day on how to make yourself look better on on. Uh, <laughs> she's do. doing IEP. She's, <laughs> she's been real busy with IEP meetings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, working as a special ed teacher, and so yeah. she's on the computer constantly. So we actually looked up on how to do it. That's funny. Hey. To use. Can you guys see me? 
Oh, but back. we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. I don't know what happened. I've been in Zoom meetings and I, my camera's not on. I don't. Hmm. I know there, there's that camera on the lower left. Yeah, in my office, I have a skylight and it, I can see it reflecting off my forehead. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Lindsay, can you see the dark square with your name in it? I think she dropped off. She might. Oh, yeah, I think she dropped. I was going to say, up in that dark square, there's a drop down mm -hmm. menu to turn the video on. John, since this is recorded, I don't have to take notes. Am I correct? Well, like it. it is being recorded. Marsha's here. Thank you, Marsha. But um, you know, if you want to try to take, we're not. We don't have a lot of votes. So okay. if you we'll want to try to, if you want to try to do the first and the seconds, that's fine. Yeah. Sure. I can grab that. Lindsay's back. There we go. Hey, we are. Oh, what happened? Hey, Lindsay. Hey. So I did hear from Brandy, and I don't think she's going to make it. She's just so busy. Um, but I have not heard for, from Darren. I think he knows the meeting, but he didn't say he wasn't going to be here. I think that's all we're waiting on. So, okay. It, we have a quorum, obviously. We'll maybe give it a minute. Does that sound good? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. And I am, this is being recorded. I've never recorded a Zoom. So, you know, just so you know, um, that, and then, Thank you to Marsha for, for, you know, coming on to, to help take the notes. And um, I think we'll be fine. You know, I, I checked with the attorney in terms of we posted the meeting like we normally do. Um, people can, you know, could have, they could email me for public comment. I did not receive any public comment um, through email. And then I'm going to go ahead in addition to the minutes and release the recording of this uh, just for transparency, but we're more than fine, uh, you know, conducting our business in this fashion. So what do you think? Should we go ahead and start? And if Darren comes in, we'll uh, welcome him in. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's fine. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I'll let Lindsay go ahead and do the first three items and then we'll We'll kind of check in here, do our Zoom check-in. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, oh, um, Michelle has entered the waiting room. Is that his wife? Yes, I bet it, yeah. probably. Okay. So here, here he comes. Um, if you want to wait for him. Now we do look like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> You there, Darren? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Hi, Darren. <laughs> we, we can hear you. We can't see you. There's a camera to your lower left if you want us to see you. Lower left. I think you got to click on something there. There, there you go. There we go. go. <laughs> I All right. <laughs> wow. It's not my computer. It's like it's like the competition of the facial hair between Brad and Darren. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lindsay, I'll let you go ahead and get us started. Okay, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order at 634. And do you want to go ahead and take roll call, Lori? Sure. Uh, Brad? Here. Matt? Here. What's up? Here. Lindsay? Here. Darren? Here. Lori, here. Okay, I think Brandy is the only one not present. Um, obviously, no citizens wishing to address the board, right, John? So. Yeah, I got no emails, so we can okay. go right into learning and discussion. 
Okay. Well, I just wanted to do the quick Zoom check-in. I can't believe uh, that we're having a board meeting via Zoom, but I guess every day is kind of, I can't believe. And this is recording, like I said, so I think I've covered everything um, with the Zoom situation, but I just appreciate you guys participating in this way. I mean, our kids are doing it, our teachers, it's, it's the way of the world, but I sure wish it wasn't the way of the world. So, <laughs> but it is what it is. Any comments about the, our Zoom format here? Okay. Oh, nope. All right. Um, school fees for next year are staying the same. Um, the only um, issue, which was before COVID, that we can't control was our lunch prices went up a quarter and our, um, our milk prices went up a nickel. That's dictated to us, you know what I mean, through the federal government. So, um, the item that was in your board packet, you're approving the fees, but they're all staying the same. And then um, you'll see, we, we alert folks to, we're doing online registration again for next year. And then we always still are gonna have a walk-in day, um, which is Wednesday, August 5th. Of course, you know, how next year starts is just kind of an open book right now. <laughs> we don't really know how it's gonna start and what we're gonna be required to do, but, um, you do have the fees to approve later in the meeting. So any questions on fees? No. Oh. Oh. Okay. No. Um, capital projects update. Um, actually, we'll do both of these together, six and seven, and staffing and program needs, um, the SROs. I mean, basically, Leo and I have been consulting with um, – our leadership around the state, and we've been getting advised as much as we can about the future of our budget. So we basically have put a halt on everything related to um, things like capital projects or additional staffing, um, and basically are working on a kind of uh, life safety critical needs basis only in terms of approving anything uh, out of the budget. And so I know a lot of work went into like those SROs, but we're just putting a, a hold on them, um, as we were gonna have to pay for those positions. Um, I've, I've publicly come out um, and, and have said, I'm gonna do everything in my power to not bring to the board any sort of reduction in staff um, or benefits or salary in any way. Um, as you know, you know, we, we have built some things up the last few years, but I still think we're at a, a basic needs functioning school district in terms of our, our staffing. Um, we are going to look for ways if somebody does leave us, like if they retire or move away, um, a, a good strategy is to try to figure out how not to replace people. Because as you know, um, salary and benefits are eat up pretty much 80% of the budget. And so um, and so that's kind of where we stand. I don't know if Leo, you wanna back any of that up. I mean, Leo and I are still, all 850 schools and districts are still awaiting what the real impact is gonna be, you know, at the property tax, sales tax and state level. We just don't know. Um, you know, a couple other strategies as we do, we have built up some reserves, we can spend those down. That's not a long term solution. But that is a short term solution. And then of course, um, I don't know if they're going to let districts borrow. But borrowing is is another another strategy. And so Leo, do you want to back any of that up? And then we'll take questions. I just said we I agree and then everybody needs to know we really have heard nothing yet from the state. For instance, a good little tidbit of news since the last time we met was that we were approved for the uh, security project at the high school, the $50,000 grant. But at this point, there's been zero word as to whether or not they're going to be able to pay their portion. If we did go ahead with that project, mm -hmm. would we get our $50,000 quickly or would we have to wait for it or whatever? So even that, in, in our opinion, is on hold until we, we hear what the payout uh, probabilities are. So um, until the uh, state has an idea of what their losses are in this whole thing, they're not going to come up with any firm plan for us. So it could still be a couple months real easily before we hear anything. 
And um, I assume they'll try to fund education to the best of their ability, but th that definition could uh, change drastically depending on what happens. The sales tax money that we rely on for capital projects as well. <clears throat> uh, today, we, for instance, we got our uh, Forsyth sales tax, but this was for January and it was $60,000. That usually runs about $70,000 a month on average. So it's close to average. Uh, but, you know, we haven't even seen February or March yet, but April's probably going to go to zero, you know, when we get that in July, that's going to go way, way down. So it's just too many unknowns right now to move forward if we don't have to. Sounds good. Any questions on how we're philosophically kind of approaching this? I mean, as it gets closer to next year as a team, we will probably come up with a list of savings where we can make savings in, in areas that are non-personnel related. And so those wheels are already turning in addition to just kind of, you know, putting a delay on everything. So any questions about that? Lindsay, you didn't go sideways because you don't like our philosophy, did you? <laughs> I don't, having know, any perspective. I don't know how this all looks. I'm, that's on my phone because I don't have a, well, maybe I do have a camera on my work computer. I don't even know. I'm not really good with technology. That's okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. So uh, no one has any questions about that. We'll just keep you posted. Makes sense. Sounds yeah, good. it sounds good. Okay. Um, you do have a personnel report to approve later in the meeting. And so I thought I'd just have the learning and discussion on it now instead of during the motion. Um, we're very fortunate. Um, most of our openings are at the high school. And as you know, high school teachers are extremely hard to find. Um, Bryce and his team um, did a great job with um, remotely interviewing people, checking references, and we actually had a, a decent selection um, for each of those positions. Um, I don't know if I, if I need to read the report to you, but I mean, um, Amy Clausen is retiring in four years, so you have to approve her to be in the retirement um, track. Um, Jaylene Higginbaum is a high school math teacher. Um, I did forward her resignation to you separate. And then Dan Boyton is moving down to Sangamon Valley. Um, a lot of districts are doing what we're doing and they were able to offer him a lot more money. Um, and we just don't have the ability once somebody's in our track. And so that'll be a loss. Dan's a great guy, and, but we wish him well. He'll be closer to home. And then Hannah is from Williamsville and Williamsville had a middle school science opening. And so that's why Hannah at the middle school um, is leaving us. And so um, that's, that's one part of the personnel report. Um, Chrissy Floyd is a newly hired custodian and she's going back to Missouri to live with family. Um, we're not replace, we have it posted, but we're gonna hold off on replacing her and seeing how we can just deal with our current team meeting our needs. That would be an example of where we could save if somebody leaves us, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, you know, I, I don't know if we need to talk about each person, but we have, a, we think awesome recommendations for you for the high school math. Um, Chris Sider used to be with us, special ed teacher, wonderful teacher. And he, was a real, he, he was a real loss. He, he moved to, I think Nashville and is moving back. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't realize that, I guess, okay. I was getting him confused with Dodie. That's what it was. Cause I, I thought he was already a teacher. So I was confused. So he's coming back. He's coming no, back. Yeah, and, they moved to North Carolina and they're coming or, back. Yeah, North Carolina. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And okay. the, reason, the reason that opening's there, as you know, Kyle and his wife, the Tuts, left us. So that's why there's an opening there for the for the high school special ed. Has he put in his um, resignation, Kyle and his wife? Yes, they were approved back in February. February. Yeah, I think it was February. Okay. And yeah, so that's the reason for the social studies teacher and then the business teacher um, there as well. Um, but we're really excited about this group and we think it's gonna strengthen our faculty. So um, I'm amazed that we are gonna be fully staffed for next year and it's April. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. So mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if there's gonna be any other movement, but just for us to be fully staffed for next year at this point, I mean, I've gone, 
you know, May, June, July, all the way to August. So hopefully knock on wood, nothing happens, but we got a good group of folks. And then our French teacher, as you know, also is retiring and we just, we posted it and there is, there is not a French teacher to be had. I mean, there's just nobody out there. And so you see in the personnel report, Mr. Stewart's recommendation on how to hire French or the French situation with um, just going to Spanish only and using some other staff members. Um, that is going to be a savings for us because technically we're not replacing with a full-time teacher. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, we don't think it's an ideal situation. However, we are confident that if monitored properly, we can still provide um, quality foreign language under this situation. We are gonna to have to apply for some waivers at the state level because the folks that are gonna be picking up those Spanish sections, they do have like Spanish as a minor, but they don't have the teaching certificate. But right now, even before COVID, um, there's, you know, the state's being very flexible with schools on allowing them to be in compliance and get creative like this. So questions? Um, on the, I have a question about that. Um, I know that in, in the uh, in Mr. Stewart's report, he said there were like 22 students who had signed up for French. Um, I was wondering if, and I don't know what the number is, how many students were uh, like were taking like French three or French four, the higher level French. If maybe we can offer them, uh, perhaps maybe to do it on IBS um, as an alternative. I know. If you're a French one or French two, going to a Spanish may not be as much of a transi transition, but if they put in three years of French and if they're a senior and they want to do one more year of French, could that be a possibility for those students? Thank you for bringing that up. And I'm surprised he did not put that in his, his little blurb there, but we are pursuing that and he is pursuing that to allow those students that would choose to do that. And then we would just have to get a staff member to help supervise that through the online piece. And so, um, so yeah, so that's a great point. And um, I'm glad you brought up the question. That'll be good because that can affect like how much credit they get in college or whatever, you know, where they go in on their, for college, mm -hmm. for college. Yes. The other thing I failed to mention is we did have um, that science opening at the middle school. Um, we, we talked to our high, science teacher, Miss Ennis, that we just hired. She has more middle school background than high school. She was willing to stay at the high school level. And, you know, we were, you know, happy with her performance this year. But what we did is we sought both middle and high school. And then we thought that was a good strategy. And then we found an awesome high school person. So it almost, so we've improved ourselves like a lot there in terms of positioning Miss Ennis in some experience level that she is more has middle school level and finding this science teacher. So um, again, I, I don't want to get too dramatic, but the fact on science and math that we found two people so awesome is, I mean, we went a whole year without filling a science job. I don't know if you remember that. So mm -hmm. we're tickled. So Sherry Ward's her name, yeah. So, any qu other questions on the personnel report? <clears throat> so, is IVS uh, WSM is that offered through? Is it is that a company or I'm not familiar with IVS? It's the uh, Illinois Virtual School and. Oh, uh, okay. It's, yeah, it's the uh, online kind of supplement that uh, our students can take for credit recovery. Or oh, okay. For credit. Okay. Great. Okay. I just wanted to know what it was. Thank you. Sure. Also, yeah. the, the question is um, on what Osama is saying, is there like anything with Richland about a foreign language dual credit that can be offered that could be worked out? I think the better way to go with foreign language is on, online. I'm not sure what um, through the virtual high school piece, but we'll pursue all options. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what Richland offers or not, but we'll certainly put research it and make whatever we can available to our students. John, I just I have one other question, sorry, before we move on. Um, for the math, I know that we uh, hiring 
uh, Don Mann to do the high school math to fill in um, Jaylene Higginbotham's position. Um, are we still offering the same courses? Like, because uh, I, I read on in her uh, resume, it was impressive. But she uh, she did mainly middle school and ninth grade math. And then um, I know that Jaylene did statistics. Um, so as far as you know, that's still a course that's still you know all of yeah. the courses that she had filled. We're still offering it to the students coming in. Yeah, there's been no ch change in our course offerings. I have a feeling Mr. Stewart Stewart with our math team now is probably doing some shuffling a little bit with this new person coming on, and then all the math team was involved in the interview process. So um, all of those teachers and, you know, were, were a part of this hire and, and I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I'm sure there have been a few adjustments, but same offerings. That's another good question. So other than the French, all the uh, course offerings will be offered coming in fall. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Should I just keep cruising? Yeah. Okay. The new middle school project, man, we didn't even get a chance to smell the roses and celebrate with this darn COVID thing. Um, I'm stunned about that. We will eventually. <laughs> someday. So anyway, um, again, we're not the only district that passed a referendum and has some sort of project ahead of us in relation to COVID and the economy. So um, I've been working very closely with um, our architects with Kevin Hyde at St um, Stifle and uh, with Chapman and Coulter, who there are bonding attorneys, if you will. And so kind of here's where we're at um, in, a, in a nutshell. Um, we are, we are pursuing, there are things that need to be done that don't cost money. And so we are pursuing all of those like it's business as usual. So the architects have already put together um, a feedback loop with our teachers to get their feedback as they start their design process. So that happened last week. Normally they do focus groups. Um, they will come back later and, and do some other meetings with community members and, and staff um, as they get farther along in the process, but at least we've started that. And then the other thing, um, under normal conditions, what a lot of districts will do in the first six to 10 months is they will front the money to pay some of the fees that need to start being paid to get the work done um, related to architects, um, related to doing some like survey work. Um, but I have told them that we are not. And so what they do then once the bond sale happens, the districts get reimbursed. And so um, we pretty much told them we are not fronting any money. And we've asked them to put some options together about how to go out for some of the money. Um, I don't know if you remember Kevin in his presentations, out of all of that 33 million, some of it can be taken out in, in terms of what they call alternative bonds. So we could here in the next 10 months, take out part of, before we do the total bond sale, part of that money so we have access to funds to pay um, folks to get the project started and so that was a lot to absorb so i'll kind of because there's one other thing i need to update you on so i'll stop and see if, if you have any questions on that basically what the financial people are telling us is don't do anything drastic like you know we're not going to do the project they're like that's unrealistic it's unrealistic to go like it would have been before COVID. So what they're saying for us to do is every three months on a quarterly basis, meet with them and kind of analyze where the markets are and where the financials are and make decisions about this project in, in three month increments versus getting too weird one way or another. And then um, we do have time. I think there's five years to sell the bonds, which is quite a window. And I think after that, you have three years to complete the project. So, I mean, time's on our side. Um, you know, they did hint that there could be some financial unknown economic advantages that we don't even know about that could come up in the next 12 months. Um, 
you know, related to this. So there's one other important thing I need to update you on, but I'll stop and take questions. I explained it that well. Makes sense. Um, the big, the big thing that I kind of need to get your blessing on tonight related to this is one of the most important things is to, con is to select a construction manager. And we've been advised and I've done the research, um, to do the, um, put out a request for a proposal for a construction manager, and they will also be the constructor of the project, um, that usually saves the district money and also um, puts, puts the pressure off like the people in this Zoom room. You know, we, we're not builders. We need to have the experts managing the process on behalf of us as the owner. And, and hiring a construction manager as the constructor is the better way to go. Um, there is a little bit of risk in it, but it's very low in terms of um, the bid requirements. We can put that out as a request for a proposal because it's a service. And when you bid out a service, it doesn't meet the same bid specs as if you're bidding out like an item, Do you, if that makes any sense. And so I've worked closely with David Braun and the architects to make sure we're, and I've talked to other superintendents that we're pursuing this in the right way. After tonight's meeting, what I'd like to do is get your permission to, to pursue this what would happen is they would put out this RFP, you know, hopefully, you know, five to eight um, people will apply. There's probably three main big ones in the area. I think there's one out of Peoria, one out of Springfield, one out of Champaign. And basically, um, I would like two board members to be on that committee um, to, it'll probably be two board members, myself, uh, Keith Garner, and then probably Chris and Bryce. Um, along with the architect who will facilitate it, but um, I need two board members to volunteer to be on that interview team. And then hopefully um, at May's meeting um, in about a month, we can present, we, we want that process to happen during May. And it'll, I guess it'll have to happen through Zoom interviews. Um, so questions on the construction manager as the constructor. And then I don't, you know, you guys have been awesome about who volunteers for what. So I, whoever wants to be on the committee would be great. I'd like to be on the committee. <laughs> no surprise. Oh, sure. I'll throw my hat. I work okay, anybody want to arm wrestle either of those two? Hey, I feel like I'm in a Brady Bunch right now what's sitting here watching this. So <laughs> the screen keeps changing around. No, if anybody else wants it, I'll bow out. But There's um, just no I, Alice. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm stay-at-home dad. I got plenty of time to. Okay, so, do anything, so, so Lindsay and Darren, and then I'll, um, it, I'll do it. Once I know more about the process, I'll let you guys know. Okay, sounds good. And Leo, you, Leo, I forgot you. You'd be a good one to be on that committee with your background, if you don't mind. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I've never hired a uh, construction manager myself, so it'd be a new process for me too. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I don't know why I put number 10 on here. We're moving on to the COVID-19 impact May to August. I mean, I basically copy you in on any communication I put out to the staff or to the parents. So hopefully you feel like you're in the loop of what we're trying to do with what we do know over the next you know, few months. Um, we had put out a, if a school year ends in May scenario, um, which we're executing on and I can't really speak to, you know, how August is going to be. We just have not got the information, the correct information to be able to plan August. So all we have planned is up till July and trying to treat our seniors as best as we can in terms of giving them an experience. I don't know, just like none of us know what the restrictions, how they're going to be eased you know, in the next 30 days versus June versus July. We just don't know, you know, yet. So hopefully you feel like you're in the loop. Um, but, you know, we're trying like every other district to just do the best we can, you know, with planning. It's frustrating oh. because we're plan. We, I love planning like 
plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. I mean, that's what we do, right? We can't even do that because we don't have enough information, you know. It has been really good, though. Um, I know other districts did not do the what happens if we go back to school or if we don't go back to school. And I know I was kind of critical in the beginning about how, you know, whether or not our teachers were reaching out. But it's been really awesome, I think, in April. And I know that parents were very pleased with Bryce's plan for, you know, if we go back in May or not. I will tell you that a judge today uh, reversed Pritzker's order to keep the state closed another 30 days. So he, Pritzker's appealing it, but um, as of right now, a judge reversed it and the state will open back up on May 1st. So I don't know, it's gonna be caught up in the court system now for a while. But the court system is not busy, so it might go pretty quick. <laughs> hey, I know the court reporter who did that. <laughs> oh, I do. It threw me. Wait, did Michelle do it? Yep. Oh, uh, it's, that? It's, it's a statute. Um, the governor doesn't have the authority to shut the state down more than 30 days in any emergency. The legislation has to step in, and he overstepped his authority, and that Darren lawyer was on was top a, of it a senator from um southern illinois sued him and that's yes it, the the lawyer's name that went with was with him darren or something i don't know he um basically it was it, it was um it was he just went against the statute saying you don't have the authority and you have to provide a reason and the state couldn't provide a reason so well as according to pritzker he's god <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, he's only I, God for one term, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's interesting to see how it affects the fall because yeah. well, the well it, it doesn't mean that we're not going to get locked down because the legislation can come in and and uh, grant him emergency powers for another thirty days. The well, legislation can come back in well, and override him. So. Yeah, that's true. It's it's it, 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 all all it means is that this you know the state technically, like she said, May first can ignore everything he says, but it's not going to happen. The the good news is no matter all of those things are kind of out of our control in terms of what we're told. The good news is, and I've just real been real pleased with all of the different groups. So the school board association, the school administrators association and the teachers associations, um, as well as the Illinois Principal Association, all of those groups, there is representatives of all of those groups on a task force that when something comes down from the governor, all of those groups are meeting to help advise local districts on, on how to proceed. And so that's been very powerful and very helpful and comforting to people in like my position that we have all those groups trying to then make sense of whatever is announced so that, you know, because practically we're the ones that have to do whatever it is, right? And so just know that we're, we're all kind of working together and all 850 schools are kind of in the same boat, really. Um, I, I get it, they're in different parts of the state and that could start to change. And especially if the, the more South counties have restrictions that are eased. So you could see some variance in how local schools kind of approach this just due to the geography of the state. Um, also, please know that I'm in, in constant contact with our probably 15 school districts that are closest to us. And so there's just a lot of good communication happening. So hopefully, as board members, you take comfort in that knowing that. Any other COVID questions? <laughs> we don't have crystal balls, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'll keep cruising then. Um, next week is um, Staff Appreciation Week. It's always the first week of May. And um, on behalf of the district and the board and the administration, um, we'd really like to show our appreciation to all of our staff. Um, you know, our teachers have been working very hard and We've gone out and purchased um, meat kits 
um, for each of our staff members, not just the teachers, but anybody who's a staff member is going to get um, a meat kit. Um, it costs forty dollars a person. Um, you know, we were able to kind of look at our budget and and figure out a way to afford that. I think it's a awesome gesture on our part to say thank you to our staff for all they do at any point in the year, but especially recently. Um, I did not, we did not predict this on the meat kit thing, but you just heard today all these meat suppliers are shutting down. And so it's really kind of a cool timed gift that everyone's gonna get a meat kit. Um, and it's gonna, that's gonna mean a lot to, to our, our staff families. And if somebody, you know, it's also a, will be a good gesture if somebody doesn't need the, the, the meat kit, then they can forward it along to somebody in our community that does. So I, I think it's just small thing, but a huge thing that we, that we are doing. And we, we're, we're gonna do a drive up. We want, we, I have not announced this yet because I wanted to talk to you guys first, but next Tuesday, um, I think that's May. It's the 5th is when we're doing it, right? Yeah. I'm going to come the way. May, May 5th from 3 to 5. I think we're going to have to split it. We were going to do one location, but I think we're going to have a grade school location and a middle school high school. So there'll be two locations just because Carrie's got stuff going on at the grade school that day. And okay. so um, if okay. you as board members want to be there, and help cheer on our staff or help pass out the meat kits, you're all welcome. We're gonna to try to make it fun and have some music playing and and just do something special for our staff. So you're all welcome. Hey, John, um, it's just one grade, I think, that day. And it's, it's picking up their stuff out of their lockers from four to six. Right. If we can do the one location, I got donations from parents to get that sign and it's only going to be at the high school. I mean, That's fine. obviously we, 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 we can do the high school and then Carrie just won't be able to be a part of it, but that's okay. I mean, I, you know, if we have, and you all don't have to come, but if we have a couple board members, myself, a couple administrators, just kind of handing them out and cheering them on as they drive up, yeah. you know, you're going to have to have your masks on. Okay. And, um, you know, and, and, and gloves, those type of things, but um, no different than how we've been handling the, the learning pickup drive through, but it's just going to be a, sh a staff appreciation. So I'm going to make the announcement tomorrow to the staff probably, or Wednesday, one of those two days, so that they can plan to, to come get this. And um, how soon do we need to be there, John? Do we need to be there before three? I think if you get there close to three, it's fine. Okay. We're not going to label the boxes. We're just going to have a roster oh, okay. and just check okay. people off as they come because we thought it was too complicated, you know, to label them. Sure. Okay. I can probably be there. Yeah, I'll be there too. Awesome. I should be able to be there. Well, send out an email reminder. Yeah, I can remind. I'll, I'll remind. Have we sent out an email to? see when the high school can get their belongings because I know Ethan still got his nasty gym clothes in his gym locker. I'm pretty sure that schedule went out in one of Bryce's communications. Okay I might have missed it. Okay I'll look I'll look and see if I've got or, or just shoot him an email and he'll okay. Thank you. Okay. Um and then I'll let Leo take this next one. We we do need to amend our budget and we do need to have a hearing and we do need to publish that hearing in the newspaper. So it's out there in the newspaper. It's May 18th is coming up pretty quick because Memorial Day is, is our normal day, scheduled day. So that's why it's the 18th. The hearing um, will start at 6.15. It'll have to be through Zoom again. And we'll have to just, you know, have people email us if they want to make a comment. Um, but do you have any questions, Leo? Or Leo, do you want to add anything about the amended budget hearing? So the five pages that you, if you're following along in your packet with the meeting, the five pages that you that come up next are uh, the actual form that goes into the State Board of Education. I think a, uh, I, if we open the packet, if we all have the same page numbering, the uh, my financial report that's on page 79, I believe we all open it up in this, as a PDF and 
uh, with the, with the uh, it's got the revised budget right in the middle of the page if you had a chance to look through the financial report. Uh, the main goal of an amended budget at the end of the year is you're not doing planning at that point, of course, you're just mostly kind of doing reporting, but the goal is to make sure there's enough money in each fund that the State Board of Education is happy at the end of the year because there aren't supposed to be any negative balances, so sometimes there's transfers and so on. But I was able to keep the transfers exactly the same as the original budget, $275,000 from the capital projects over to the bond and interest. Uh, what did change quite a bit is the Fund 50, which I've been telling you all year that I made a transcribing error there, where I, in the original budget, I only had expenditures of $260,000 in that fund which was way, like $100,000 off. And I discovered that after we had already submitted the budget and all that kind of thing. So I went back through Fund 50, which if you are looking at the financial report, page 79, uh, it's right in the middle of the middle of the page. Uh, and that is now at 350,000, which will cover the expenses of that fund. It reduces our end of the year surplus uh, of eight, uh, down to about $18,000, but that is, uh, uh, you know, the budget itself. It's not what we have in the bank. We have a lot more than that in the bank. Uh, the projections on the bottom of that same page right now would have us at about $4.7 million in the bank at the end of the year, uh, given, the, uh, given the income that we've had so far this year, and really not counting on a whole lot more uh, on the things that I don't, that I don't know about toward the end of the year. So, uh, part of the reason it went down to 18000 was I don't know about some of the categorical things like transportation payments, whether another one will come in or not. I'm going to guess not. So I took that out. Uh, but other than that, I we're just covering bases on an amended budget. The tough thing to put together will be in about two months, three months, when we start talking the fiscal year uh, 21 budget that will begin July and will approve next uh, September. But that'll be the tough one to put together. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. But if you are looking at the financial page on 79, you can compare the original budget at the, at the adopted budget at the top of the page to the amendment one in the middle of the page compared to where we are right now uh, at the bottom. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And I can email you the detailed budget as well if you want. It's about a 30 page document that gets sent to the State Board of Education. And we will be looking to approve that in um, at the May meeting, 615 hearing, uh, which lasts about five minutes. We could even do it at 625 and make it. Uh, and Lori, I didn't tell you, but your name was in the paper when we announced the meeting. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so at least it was for something good. <laughs> it's already been advertised and there's a uh, the part of the ad says that there's a copy of it in the business office that available for public viewing. And never okay. in my 40 year career has anyone ever come in to view the budget. <laughs> but well, we still have to put it out there and let people know it's available. So unless you have any questions, it's really, uh, I don't see anything a big deal on that. And uh, uh, the big deal we'll be trying to put together next year's budget. Okay, everyone good? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I threw some things in the consent agenda that normally aren't there. I just didn't feel like they needed to have a separate approval to them. Um, one is the state consolidated district plan. Um, Chris uh, helps manage that and put a little summary in terms of how we're going to spend our um, that that type of grant money. And again, let's hope we get it. You know, and then. The IHSA and IESA are just um, formalities that we have to get board approval every year to be members of those organizations. And then the last one, I think the principals usually come to the meetings and maybe talk a little bit about the handbook changes. I think because of the COVID situation, I just, I told them that, you know, make whatever, most of those changes were in the works before COVID. And so none of them were, I, I didn't feel like they needed a presentation. And so th those just need to get approved so that um, however next year is gonna go, those are set to go. So I just wanted to field any questions on those things that normally aren't there. Kind of formalities, any questions? 
No. Okay. And then um, I think we're ready to go through the motions. That didn't sound right. I meant go through the, <laughs> I didn't go, the motions. I meant go through the approval items. <laughs> okay. So we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole. I'll second it. Is there any discussion or anything need to be pulled out? I guess we can go ahead and do roll call, Lori. Okay. Um, Brad? Yes. Matt? Yes. Wassam? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Darren? Yep. Lori? Yes. All in favor. Okay, so motion passes. Now we need a motion to approve the school fees for 2020, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the school fees 2020 to 2021 as presented. I'll second that. Brad? Yes. Matt? Yes. Wassam? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Darren? Yep. Lori? Yes. Okay, motion passes. And then we need to approve the uh, hiring and acceptance of resignations in the personnel report. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the hiring of district personnel and acceptance of the resignations personnel report um, as of 4 And I'll second. Oh, I think, was that you, Sam? Yeah, that's okay if you want to second it. Oh, no, go it was me. Okay. Uh, Brad? Yes. Matt? Yes. Wassam? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Darren? Yep. Lori? Yes. Okay, most passes. I think that's it. Is there anything else? I just wanted to say that um, I really appreciate you guys being board members and being on the team. I was thinking if this was my, if this would have been my first year in the district, let alone my second year, I mean, oh my gosh. So, I mean, the fact that, you know, we've been together enough um, and we have so much going on in our district prior to all this. And I just feel very blessed to, to have, um, you know, trusting relationships that are built on respect with our teachers and with our board. And it, it makes getting through this, you know, manageable. I mean, I, they're not every school district has a cohesive team and I just don't take it for granted. So, and Lindsay and I had done some talking on this. I don't know if you want to add to it, Lindsay. But. No, I just think, yeah, it's been really good. And we've had, um, I'm just really proud of all the support. And I, I know, I don't know if this makes the administrators cringe, but I don't care so much about the academics during this time because the kids aren't, I mean, I firsthand can tell you my kids are not learning what they would learn if they were at school with their teachers, but um, their teachers are still there supporting them. And it's not even just their classroom teachers, you know, Mrs. Opperly's reached out and Jessica Hill and their art teacher. And um, it's just, it, I don't know. I think it's been really good. And I think the meal service and all that, I feel like we're really supporting everybody and making sure that, um, all our families are taken care of. So I am very proud of how everyone's handled it. And so, hey, graduation, yep. I guess, I mean, that could end up not happening in July, right? Yeah, we'll have to see what the restrictions are at that time. That's the tenant, you know, that's the date. And in terms of the format of it, who knows? I mean, I think we purposely picked that date to hope to have an in person graduation. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Bryce that was the 27th, some... right? What? It's the 27th. I, is uh, that it's right? 31st. 31st. Oh, 31st. Okay. Jeez, I had the 26th down. I don't even know what date that is. Um, I need to put that the third the 31st of July. It's the last Friday of the month. Okay. That okay. whole week, there's a bunch of stuff planned. That's probably why you had the 26th. Okay. Um, just so everyone knows, Bryce does have some stuff planned in May. Um, I don't know if he's announced it yet for the seniors, but he was going to do that drive through thing. I think for some reason, I think that's on May 8th. 
but you can always check it out on the Facebook page. He's going to have like all the seniors, I think, set up in the parking lot and they can wear their cap and gown because there's some seniors that will already be gone for boot camp and things. So I don't know if you can come and support. I always think that's good. I think it's going to be like a drive through thing. So, um, but he has a lot of stuff. Bryce has been really good, I think, about connecting with the kids and the mm -hmm. seniors. And him and Chris put up, had, they had teachers put up signs today for all the seniors and the eighth graders, and those look really nice. Um, so I think, and the community club is putting out signs for teachers um, for the grade school. They got yard signs for Teacher Appreciation Week. And then I've collected some money from parents, and we're going to put a big sign at the high school. Um, and then, I don't know, we're going to either do gift cards or maybe signs for the other teachers. I have to figure that out this week. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. I think that people have really came together to show support, you know, in all kinds of ways. So anyway, it's, it's been really good. Well, thank you to all of you. So I hope your families are well. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I think we are adjourned at 7.20. Yep. Stay safe, everybody. We'll be in touch. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care.